Okay, I'm going to build an application that is the precursor to content classification. So this will allow you to extract the text from documents that we would then use to put into content classification. Content classification requires typically 30 documents or so of a specific type before it actually starts to work. I've got a couple here that I built off uh, some MT document site standard documents. These are uh, medical reports. These are generic. They're, they don't have anything to do with anybody. Um, they're made up, but they have a lot of information about various pieces of uh, like a patient consultation. And another one is a operative report. So I have two, two of the operative reports and three of the consultations. So I'm going to break those up into two different document types so I can use content classification to identify them. But I need more, but I'm just showing how to actually create the the workflow to get the text off of the documents and organize it so we could use content classification to build a knowledge base. So let's get going on that. First things first, start a new application as usual. And I'm using Fast Doc Capture to get this to get this application started. First, you log into any application. Uh, you can't get to the wizard button unless you're logged into an application. And there it is, the wizard button. And I click on that to start a new application. I'm going to create a new RRS application. The new application is going to be called Extract or Class 5. So there it is. I'm going to click Next. And I really am, going to, am not going to create any document classes. I don't tend to – I would never change document type or page type. Just leave those alone. There's some inheritance stuff going on. I'm not going to add any sample images. Get through all this and press uh, Finish. This is actually Data Cap 9.1. This is the first time I've been through this. So this is actually Data Cap 9.1. I haven't actually been through this, but the – the views look a little, bit, a little bit different now than they have in the past. So that's fine. And I'm going to say close. Or I'm going to say explore the application folder when the wizard closes. I'm going to turn that off because I don't like that window that pops up in front of me. And then I'm going to close out of this and open up FastDoc again. And this time choose my application. So first things first, let's build our doc hierarchy and add a document type here. Add a document. I'm going to call this one. Uh, then we're just doing one document type. ID page type. Yeah. I'll just call ID doc type. And we will, uh, so we're going to inherit functions from document. Add that. Add two page types. I'm going to add a page type called ID page type. Enable, Enable functions from page. So I'm going to inheritance. And then I'm going to add one more page type called ID page type trailing. Now, I'm going to say add. And now I've got my two page types. The one thing I'm going to need is in this one, we're going to use a page type prefix on here for what are the actual page types that we're going to identify these as. So I'm going to add one field called uh, page type prefix. There it is. I click add. It's there. We can do some, we'll have to come back and do something in DataCap Studio to this to give it a dictionary that it'll show the, the actual page types. We can always type them in as well. So my document type is done there. The next rule set is, um, the next thing is I'm going to look at the rule sets. You can always go to save the pages. You can always go to here, choose your page ID. You see, you can see your workflows here. Okay, I stepped away for a little bit trying to remember where I was. And I was looking at the workflow in this and how do we decide what part of the application are we going to build next? Uh, page ID, we do vscan page ID, uh, then there's a router task that could possibly go to fix up if page ID does not work. Profiler does all the OCR and the, the extraction, then there's a router to verify, and then the export task. And then you can see the, the different workflows here. So verify it would be here, it has a verify, then it has its own export. Export matches the other end. I was looking to look at page ID, so identify pages. I can simply click on this. It'll bring up the UI rule set for page identification. And I'm not going to use fingerprinting because we're going to simply have the users pick what this document is. That's how we're going to identify these documents. So I'm just going to use page, page source location. I'll turn off that fingerprinting page source location. Uh, main page of a new page is going to be an ID page main. And anything else after that is going to be type trailing. So we're going to use these. Remember, main page types have one field here. They have the image uh, page type prefix. So this is going to be 
in this case, our page types are going to be consultation and operative. So I'll have a consultation main and a consultation trailing. And I'm probably going to put an underscore under there just so I can really identify them. But in our next application, what I'm going to have is those, those page types. So I have to identify those next. And what we really want out of this OCR on this page, we want to tell it to read the page. I want to tell it to look, uh, we don't need the zones on it, but I want to tell it to save the results to a text file. We're going to take that text file and save it into a folder by the name underscore main or underscore trailing of that index pre um, index page type prefix. That's how we're going to save it. And then we're going to have a directory of that, and we're going to use that to populate our list of our knowledge base with that list of files. So then when we send a new file, we got the text. It's going to respond and say, hey, there's the this is the actual uh, file name. Save that, and I'm ready to run a document through it. Let's jump over to DataCap Studio as well. Extract for classify, and there's my password. And I could have done this in the UI rule set, but I forgot. I want to also make sure. So I locked the rule set. I forgot to do this before, and I'm going to make sure when you have this page type, you can say manage variables on it. And this is when create documents is called. When create documents is called, it'll use these numbers to actually organize the pages into documents. So I have one minimum, maximum one page, minimum one page, and the order is one. So if I have two main pages in a row, it's going to split them into um, separate documents. My trailing pages are, I can say done. I can say manage variables on this one. And my trailing pages are, I can have as many as I want, I can have as few as I want, but it, I want it to go after, so I'll make it to the main page. So that's done. The next step is to simply test it. And on export, we're going to have to build another rule set here. But let me just go through and test this and make sure it's working and that it actually created the documents that we wanted to, that, you know, that it split the, the page ID is actually working. Oh, I got to go get one of my consultation documents here. I'll just pick one of them here. I'll copy it. I'll put it in the folder with my application. Data cap, extract for classify, images, and multi-format. Since it's a PDF, I'll put the multi-format directory. That workflow that does the multi-format directory already has the version to TIFF built into it. So I'm going to scroll down to my workflow for multi-format, click new. Remember, I'm on the test tab here. Choose multi-format here. Click play. You'll see here that it reads it in. It's probably going to be, I think it's two or three documents this first page. Okay, it's done. It's split it into three separate pages. I'm going to advance it and send it through page ID, which it should use those rules we made to break this into a single document with a main page and two trailing pages. And there it is, ID Octave. I can say keep running. I'm going to say advanced here. And there it is. I've got the image prefix type. Uh, profiler will run next. It'll extract all the text. It has a rule on it that will do the routing, that will route it to verify. I want it to route no matter what. So I'm going to go change that rule set. And I change this all the time for things like not getting into route when I want to run it through this test tab because that doesn't um, it doesn't work in profiler. It'll always try to route it, and then that'll create a different batch, and then you lose your your debug. So you have to lock this rule set routing. If you want to never have it route and you want to use the test tab to to debug, you got to turn off split batch. I would do disabled here. If I want it always to route, in this case, I always want it to go to verify for the user to choose the page type. I can just disable this. So that just means it won't check the DCO status. It'll automatically always set it to needs verify. You can see that it's light colored now. It's not going to run. It's always going to set needs verify. So then when it runs this rule, it's going to split the batch into uh, verify. Publish that. I can't use my test tab now because it doesn't route properly. So you have to use DataCap Desktop. Log into DataCap Desktop. Sometimes it's waiting on a task to run. It'll ask you that. Go find your application here, extract for classify, and I will say all. So there are, oh, because that task wasn't still running. 
So I can put it on pending here. You can do a lot of different stuff. I could run another one through. In this case, I'm going to put it on pending. Now, if I refresh this window, um, I've got that task. And I could simply do a B scan, then a page ID, then a profiler, and I'll do it. But I'll run profiler here. And it's generated a child spawned task. I will now see there's a verify and a verify export. I'll run the verify. And it comes up with, hey, here's your page type prefix. What do you want it to be? And I'll say con full consultation. And it'll be underscore main or underscore trailing. I think that's probably fine. And we'll have to, in our secondary doc, in our secondary application that actually does the classification, we'll use that. I can say submit. It says all batches are complete. Uh, do you want to finish? I say yes. And I'm done. Now they're both in export mode. Now I've got to build my export. I've got to copy that that file. If we go and look at the batch folder, that batch was 03090000. If I go and I look at that folder, which is in the batches folder under the application, there is, there should be a text file associated with this, and it's not there. Why is it not there? Okay, so I think I'll just have to build it, build the OCR into the actual export part and recreate that file. That won't be that won't be too much of a problem. So I'm going to go start building that rule set to do that, and I'm going to call it save the uh, one of them is called save the prefix of the application. So we're going to save that that field name. We're going to save it into the actual page, and then we're going to no, we're going to save the field. So we're going to field save the field name into the document. And then we're going to use that to copy that text file over into our export directory under the file name, under the folder names of what those types of documents are called. That's what Content Collector is going to use. So the first thing is I need to save that prefix. That's a field now that we're going to actually need at the, at the document level when we create this. So I'm going to create a new rule set here. I'm going to call this one Save Prefix. Save prefix and I'm just going to just use a simple RR set. And we're going to go get that field name and copy it over. RR set is under the rule runner actions. I can say RR set, move that over, and the source is going to be the backslash. When you use the backslash, that means the field name. Make sure I'm going to open this and make sure I know the field name is uh, page type prefix at p backslash page type prefix and the destination is going to be at p dot. I'm going to use a variable name since I don't have a field there. That is variable names type prefix. Now I can add that from the level, and if I have a bunch, of it doesn't have to go dig into those pages. So that one is done. I need to say where I'm actually going to run that. Yeah, and I'm going to run on pages. Uh, the only page it has to run on is this uh, ID page type main. So I'm going to say run at start of pages of type page type main. That's the only one that has a field. That one will get copied to the document of each document. One more thing is I have to move this to the export task and tell it that it can that it needs to run that. So the first thing the export's going to do is save prefix. So I don't put it there, it won't happen, it won't appear in the log, it won't get anything that work, and it'll be like, why didn't it run? And you'll, you'll have that happen a lot. You'll figure it out quick. Next thing I'm going to create another rule set that's going to copy that file around. This one's going to be a little more complex. I've built it before and I've got it kind of in my head, and um, it's been a month since I did it, so I'll be going back through it. But this is the one that I have that, that I'm going to copy that text file, that one that gets generated. First, I have to generate it because it didn't get built, as we saw in that folder. So I'm going to say copy text for what? Content classification setup. And this rule is going to be our copy, our copy text main page. Cream page, I guess it doesn't really matter. Main page 
we're gonna have we're gonna be doing the same thing for trailing page and main page. Just whatever it named F, whatever I named it, F copy X main page. Oh, I have to do that OCRS. So what I'm gonna do and this is a trick you can use. I know that they do this recognize right in here. We turned on that, we turned on that switch to do the OCR. So I'm gonna dig into one of these rules and it has the recognize OCRS, where is it? Well, I don't see it there, so I'll actually just go and set it. So I can run the UI rule set just like we did in FastDoc. I can go and choose page type other. Oh yeah, I didn't say, it must not have saved before because we did other, read page, read the machine print on the page and save the results. I'll save that. And what that does is if you ever see this, it generates a bunch of rules here in the back, in the old school, rule set kind of thing. And one of them is this recognize page OCRS. I can just copy this function and paste it into my actual rule here. So I'll paste that here and I'll move it to the top. I'll rename it and I'll call this RCC recognize page OCR. So I can find it if I need to. It's just going to do the same thing. It's going to do the recognized page. It's going to create the text file, do the normalized CCO, which I don't think is necessary, but you can have it there. Uh, and then it's going to go to the next function, which will just skip it ahead. That returns false, which forces it to go into the next function here. Okay, now that I have the OCR results saved in a text file, I have to copy it. I'm going to use the same rule set to copy both the main page and the trailing page. I'm going to create different functions, and I'm just going to create it, save a prefix or a suffix variable the underscore main or underscore trailing of the page type that I want for this, then I'll have the right place to copy that file based on that suffix or yeah, the right place. To, and so the directory is going to be named the page type underscore suffix. So anyway, this will make more sense as we, as we get going. So I'm going to first decide, put a comparison in here and decide, is it a main page or a trailing page? So I'm going to say RR compare at Going to run page level so at you got type the page type you can look at what these are these variables are simply in the batch folder under any of these verify xml see so you'll see page type here if i look at this you see that the at p dot type is id doc type so oh, that's the doc uh the Page type is ID page type main or ID page type trailing. The variable, if it is equal to, I'm comparing these two to ID, I can't remember more in three seconds, I guess I have to look it up again. ID page type main, I'm going to set a suffix variable with an RR set, the down one. If it's false, it's going to drop into the next function. And I'll set this to um, the source is going to be underscore main. And I'm going to set a page type for P dot X. That'll be good. And then I want it to go to the next function. I don't want it to stop there. So you got to get this fail thing to happen. So I'm going to copy that rule set, paste it here. And now I've got that. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the trailing page. I'll just copy this rule set. I will paste it here. I've got a copy and I'll just change this one to F copy text trailing. This one is the same thing. Of course, the page type is page type trailing. I'm going to set fix to underscore trailing. And go to the next function. And then the last part is going to be to copy that. Oh, I need to create a directory if this is the first time that we've seen this type of file. So I'll add a function here. I'll call this F3 And this one is going to check to see if the directory already exists for that page type name. If not, it's going to create it. And there is a method here in FileIO. FileIO is a pretty handy one. You'll use a lot called is directory present? We could look at the help on this. But you'll use this help a lot as well. So the help on this just says, you give it a directory name, you give it a true false if you're gonna tell it to create and test for existence. And these things just saying, 
creates the directory, specifies the directory should be created. True, it'll create the directory. Test is determines the true test is return the directory exists or does not exist. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use that action. And if the directory is present, and this directory, where are we going to put these? The first thing you can, I'm going to put it in the export direct, directory A, or at A, P, 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 A, T, H, app path. This is looking up those variables that are in the data tab application manager. It's called export. There's a variable there called export. comes with every application. Plus, slash, plus, and I'm going to put it in a C directory. Plus, backslash, plus, at E dot page type. That is the variable. Remember, we copied that one over. We saved that prefix into the document at the document level. And I'll say plus at P dot suffix. So that's the directory name. That's the directory we're going to have it in. So I can create a subject called CC. I'm going to have a, a folder for each page type, whether it be the, the name of the page underscore main or underscore trailing. And the name of the page is what they typed in that they typed in when we um, did that verify page. And I do want it to create, and I don't need it to test for existence. That kind of ignores the create if you're just testing. So that one's done. I also need another one of those go tos as well. So we're going to run one more function after this, and that one's going to actually copy the file. So this one is copy text for CC setup. This is going to copy it into that directory we just specified. The first thing we need to do is understand more about the file name. So we have to go get the actual file name that was the name of the file that we are going to uh, copy. So it's just based on the system, how it generated it. So I'm going to split that file name. So this is another handy one in file IO called split file name. And I'm going to give it a variable here that is the file name. You can look up this variable in the XML again, and it's the name of the image file. Here's the image file. That's the file that I'm going to go get this. I need to, because I need to have the name of it and I need to have the extension. I'm going to use those to, to actually go and uh, build a new version of that file so I can go and find it and, and find where it's at. So I'm going to take that at image file, that variable that came right out of the batch. And these are where we're going to put them. So I'm going to put split pieces of this. This is my choice on how I do this at e dot f root. And at p dot f path, at p dot file at file, and these are your choice. What you call them? At p dot f txt. I figure if I put an f in front of it, it's not going to corrupt anything else. There's not going to be anything named f root or f path or f file. So that's why I, I chose those variable names. Now I need to set that path directory, and I'm just going to make a copy of the application path itself, just into another variable. Makes things cleaner and, and nicer if I need to come back and change it later. A path, and this is run time here. This is the actual batch directory. So that's when you have that batch directory. I'm going to copy that into a local file called at e.rt. I think that makes it easier for me to find a value and use it in another system. And the last one is another one called copy file back in the file IO. Right there. And this is going to take two parameters, three parameters, source and target and destination, or whether we whether we overwrite it or not. So the source file is going to be at P but RT the thing we just created plus backslash plus and then it's going to have the batch directory. If you look in that folder structure, you can see that these all have the folder name is that batch 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 number, which in this case is uh, there's a variable for that called at batch ID. So I can say at batch ID. That's the name of it. And I'm going to say plus backslash plus at e plus dot xt. Now that's that text file. So we looked in there. There's going to be, I don't think it's there yet because we haven't run the OCRS yet, but that's that text file that's going to exist right after those, or after this rule runs because we told it to create the text file. And the target's going to be into that export folder. And I can say A, 
or add app export. Remember, I put in the export directory plus backslash plus. See, this is very similar to what we had um, in the, is the directory present. It's the same thing. We could probably create a variable and not have to do this twice. You can do it however you'd like. I'm just going to type it over again. Easier. Right now, uh, at the dot a type plus at p six plus back to now. I want to overwrite files because they're going to have these files. The ID will be a good identifier identifier for these files. Or I could use the page the batch ID plus the file number. Either way, but the batch ID in this case is going to be a pretty good one. I might need to put a batch number as well, a file number. Hmm. Well, let's do it this way for now. We'll run one file at a time. At, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. At e dot f i l e. That's the file name, so that'll be unique to the actual batch ID. So if I have multiple main pages, there are multiple main pages. I'll actually have this file name right in them. And txt. So that should do it. Now I've got everything that I'll copy. I don't need to overwrite if it's already there. I just keep what's already there. So I'm going to run this multiple times, double checking. This will be consultation underscore main or underscore trailing. Yeah, and then a, and then a, that's the folder, and then the file name dot no, the batch ID underscore file name. I forgot the batch ID here. That's what I needed. At batch ID underscore plus underscore plus file. That separates it by the batch ID and the file name or file number in this case, text. Okay, so that's done. So I can save that. Now I need this rule set to run at some point. So I have to tell it where it's gonna run in the task profile. I want it to go under export. I'll add that to the export task. I'll put it right after the save prefix and right for the export. These are the rules for the existing system. We don't really need those anymore because we're not going to use that export system. In case you want statistics, we'll leave it in there. But that's part of the new dashboard system that export statistics. Everything exists. Oh, I didn't tell it where this actually runs. And I want it to run on pages of type ID main page and of type ID trailing page. So I'm going to run on both those page types. I'll save it, publish the rule set, and now we'll go and run a test on it. Now we had one batch that was already running in export mode. Now the one, this one doesn't have anything in it because it was the split from the original multi-format. We split off the document into the export task. So this one has the actual data in it, the actual file. I'll pick that and it shows that I have those three pages and they're of this doc type, and it is consultation, like we typed in consultation. Next thing is we'll, we can add a dictionary on that as well, so we specify the page type. That makes it a little easier if you're going to hand this to somebody that uh, is just going to verify and do this build for you. This is kind of a one-time thing. You can take this and put it into your main application, and if something goes through fix up, and then save these files back out again, and then periodically rebuild your content classification knowledge base. There are ways in DataCap to send that data over to the content classification, but I think that's not as performant. And every once in a while, you want to rebuild that knowledge base if you've been doing that a lot. So let's run export. Okay, export is done. I'm going to keep it running. I mean, I can run this over and over. If something's wrong here, I'm going to go back and fix it. But first things first, let's go out and check this. I'm going to go back over to my export directory and see what happened. I've got a CC folder. I've got a consultation main and no file. So there's no file there. I've got a consultation training. So I created the folders, but did not copy the file. So the next step is to go into the batches folder, look at the log for export, and figure out what happened. So I'm going to open this, and I'm going to search for one of my function names. This is why I give unique function names, is I always have to dig into these functions to find them. And I'm going to say, uh, I guess I should name that F. We'll do, let's just make sure that we're RCC, RCC underscore recognize. That'll be unique. And there it is. I just look going down here. Sure enough, it ran. It returned 
of the text. It's, there's a lot going on here. It's getting the text. One thing we could check for, I could see, is in that folder, did the text files get created? So the text files are there. So it's probably, since the text files are there, I know the OCR worked. Let's just go and look at one of those. So yeah, so there's the text file. We know that worked. The next step is to look at, let's just go straight to copy text for CC setup. So we're going to search for F copy text for. And there it is, that's where it's running the rule. It found the image file name. This is where it's doing the, the split file name here. Let's see what it split it into. Setting TM FEXT. Okay, yeah, so FEXT is set to TIFF, so that split looked like it worked. Now we're going to get down here to the RR set. It's probably in the copy. So I'm just going to skip right down to the to the copy part. So I'm just going to search for copy file. Actions are a good thing to search for. And here is our setup for that. And it's going to come, it's doing all the extraction for what all these variables, these smart parameters. And at the very end, you'll see that it says the actual source file. And source is this. Couldn't find source. So for some reason, my text file name didn't come out with that proper value. So I probably had something wrong with setting this file right here. Oh, runtime dir. It's just runtime. That's probably what it is. There it is. Save that. Publish it. Come back over to test. Run it again. I just have to choose export because it's already pending. Or it's already in running mode. They'll say, do you want to run it again? Yes, of course I do. And I'm going to keep running again. First thing, easiest way to check is to go to the export CC folder. No file. So what's nice when you run Notepad++ is when I come back to my log, it says, do you want to reload it? And I say yes, and I'll just search for copy file again. And here it is. I go scroll down to see what it chose for the two file names. Here's the source. Okay, so it's missing the file name here for some reason. So that file does, cannot find the source because it missed the file name. So this should have been TM001 or whatnot. So that's the at f dot file or at p dot f file. And let's go back to our file info. I'll search for split file name. at the file became. Here it is. It should have been team 2 And we can actually look at the, you can see this clearly if you just want to look at the value in the batches folder. You can look at this export.xml and it will show you this at p.f file should have been TM002. So for some reason, that file name didn't end up in our actual file name when copy file was called. So let's go look at that. Oh, there it is, at p file instead of f file. So another typo. Sorry about that, but we got a good learning experience on this. That file and this one does not use f file, or does it? Let's make sure. This one I had it right, so that's a typo on my part. Publish that, test it one more time. Just choose export, say go. Keep running, do the check. Export, CC, and there's the text file. So that's got a name, a unique name. Now we're going to feed that into content classification. That's another step, but we've got all those files. Next thing, let's just finish the set up on this, there's one simple thing I can do on this field right here. I can manage the variables on it and create a thing called the dictionary. Oh, first I'll create a dictionary and I'll have this be my file types. Add a dictionary. File types. And I'm going to add a word called 
Conclocation is one of them. This will create a pull down around that. And add another word called. What's this one? Operative report? Something like that. Operative report. I've got those two, I'll save those. And when I go into my page type variable, I'm going to manage the page type field. I'm going to manage this, I'm going to say a new field. That's it. And then I just have to say, what do I call my dictionary page? Types. Make sure that's right. Get done. Dictionary file types. So I'll go back and change the dictionary to say, there you go. I'm done with that. And now when it appears in the verification panel, it'll have those. I'm going to put a couple of files in that folder. We've already got this file done, the first one. So I'm going to put a consultation and do operative reports in there. So control C, go back over to my images folder. Delete that one we've already done those. Now I can run this in desktop, say vscan, go multi-format, it's going to read those in. Okay, so it opened those and it split them into specific TIFFs. I'll say okay. I'm going to do the next step, which is this page ID. It's going to take that next pending task. At the end, these will have the proper page, page ID names just based on their type. Okay, so they'll have the doc type there, and I'm going to say stop. I'm going to do the last thing, which is profiler. This will go through and do the OCR. So I'm not sure we needed that second OCR now, but it's split into verify. We say stop. I'm going to verify and run that task. Now it's got my three page types here, and or my three pages. This one is a consultation. I could also pre-populate this, look for the word consultation, maybe try to pre-populate it, do some things like that. Uh, go submit to the next one. Oh, all documents are complete. So I do need to say to re I need to set something to say uh, every page needs to be verified. So I need to cancel out of that and go and just choose each page manually until I set that variable. This one's an operator report and this one is a operator report. I'll submit those, say yes, submit, all documents are done, status of finished. Now it should be in export mode. And which one is it? It's going to be this one. So I don't have to run all of them. This will be, again, a background task. All the, most of these are background tasks you'd run in Rule Runner. So that'd be the next step is to set this up in, in Rule Runner. OK, so that's done. Say OK, come back over here and look at my export folder, CC. Now I've got these operative report main. Operative report trailing. I've got, I should have another consultation main. Now I can use this folder to actually go and build a knowledge base, and I'll do that next. 